Welcome back. Prudential Center opening night for the New Jersey Devils. An overcast day. And earlier tonight, this was the scene as the doors open for Devils fans for the very first time this evening as we welcome you back to the place that perhaps will be affectionately known as The Rock. Officially, it is Prudential Center. We're coming to you live from the Bud Light Gold Bar alongside Mr. Devil, Ken Danico. I'm Steve Cangelosi, and welcome to the Devil's home opener. For the players tonight, this atmosphere, what's the feeling as they walk through, get this kind of feel, see their fans for the first time this season, Kenny, after a nine-game road trip? And just the electricity in the new building. Certainly, the players have to be absolutely elated right now to be home, to be in a brand-new building, the which is uh, second to none. It's just spectacular. I can't say I get goosebumps just looking around this place and it's going to take some time to see its entirety. But the players, you know, they had a, I guess what you call a so-so road trip for the, the expectations they have, but it's been a long nine, ten, nine game grueling road trip. And let's face it, no team in, in the National Hockey League does that. So they have to be excited to be home. They face the Ottawa Senators, the best team in the Eastern Conference, maybe the best team in the National Hockey League. So let's hope that their fans get behind them and these guys are going to be fired up to get a two, get two points tonight. Now, we'll talk about whether that's good or bad facing Ottawa on this very special night in just a few moments. The Devils locker room, well, the morning skate took place here today for the team for the very first time. Now, eventually, they'll have their own practice rink right adjacent to where we are now. But this this is the Devils locker room, the main locker room, finished product, jerseys hanging just a few hours prior to tonight's game. That's completed. The practice rink is being finished, and that'll have a separate locker room, separate facilities, and this is something that several of the players and pretty much every member of Devils management is high on, having everything consolidated into this one very special complex here. What difference does that make, Dano, for the players? Well, well, I think just the, the convenience for everything. You know, obviously, and certainly for the trainers, they're happy. They can move equipment from, from practice right back to the, uh, the big arena, back to practice. And I think it's great, the practice facility, facility as well as kids in the area can skate and learn the game that's something that the organization is really trying to get across uh, amongst youth hockey and people that just want to skate and learn uh, what's going on and, and continue to keep that buzz with the New Jersey Devils but it's terrific outside and it is convenient they did it in Columbus and I think that's where Jeff got the idea was uh, have the two arenas together the practice rink as well as the, the big rink so it's fantastic offices right up top very convenient for everybody involved all right let's hear what the players had to say at the conclusion of the morning skate Stan Fischler in the locker room the Devils set for a very big Ignite their thoughts as they open up the rock tonight. Uh, it's great, you know. I think our, this is our first skate uh, this morning. Uh, you know, definitely, uh, everybody was excited. You know, when I woke up this morning, for usually I really don't think about, you know, oh, I'm going to go practice. <laughs> I was excited to come over and uh, and skate on. Definitely, was, you know, ice is was the first time that everybody anybody skated on, so it was a little little electric out there. But it was no, a nice building, definitely. It's uh, the locker room is great, and um, just going out there. I mean, we haven't toured or anything, seen the concourse much, but I guess that's nice too. But uh, all the facilities down here are great. Oh, what is it about the locker room that you like? Um, it's nice and big. It's spacey, and we don't have the big cement block in the middle of it anymore like we did at Continental. So um, it's, uh, it's, it's great. It's a great dressing room. Well, it's uh, obviously a long time coming, and we're excited to be here. And uh, it looks, uh, you know, great. Uh, we, we had a walkthrough. I think the, the people that work here uh, have done a tremendous job, and I've seen it in progress. This, this is my uh, fifth or sixth time here, so... Uh, um, you know, it's unbelievable how much work they've done, and uh, we're excited. When you look at the building and you think of Continental, what's the first thing that strikes you about the difference? Uh, brand new, state-of-the-art here. Uh, obviously, the Meadowlands uh, was a little outdated uh, today's standards, I guess. But uh, you know, everything's state-of-the-art here. Uh, every, everything's been thought out and planned for many years, so it's gonna be a lot of fun to play here. Well, it's our own building. Uh, it's gonna be special. Um, obviously, it's a new building, and. Uh, um, the way the seats are set up, that the crowd's going to be closer, it's going to create better atmosphere for the game, I think. Sergey Breland, one of the five to win three Stanley Cups with this franchise, as is Ken Danico. The architect of those three Stanley Cup winning teams, of course, is Lou Lamorello. He's downstairs with the Maven Stan Fischler. Thanks, Steve. Nobody has been more involved, more meticulous about the conception of this building than Lou Lamorello. Lou, what was the one particular thing that you're most proud of in terms of the development of the building? Well, I don't know if there's one particular thing, uh, Stan, but I think the best is to come as far as the players being able to come and be here for practice and be here on a game day uh, and not be able, you know, have to go to two different facilities. And I think the uh, best aspect of it is something we haven't really uh, appreciated yet. 
Somebody uh, told me that originally there was only going to be one dressing room, both for the practice facility and the big rink, and you insisted that there had to be a separate dressing room for the practice rink. What was your thinking behind that? Well, I think that uh, we play these games and we practice for one thing, and that's uh, to play games. And the atmosphere that has to be created before a game and the focus and concentration shouldn't be something that you do on a regular basis. It should be in a different atmosphere, a different lighting, and I think that's what we were fortunate to be able to get done. One of the themes among the pessimists was that uh, it couldn't be done. And it was uh, a tough one, and you guys had to work very hard on it. Did you ever think that it would not be able to get done in time? No, not, not ever. I think that uh, all of that should be uh, looked upon for our owner, Jeff Van Der Beek. Uh, his dedication and determination and the amount of time that he spent uh, that people are not even aware of uh, to, to do the little things that allow big things to, to end and take place. Uh, I didn't feel at any time that it was in jeopardy because of the way he created a relationship between the unions, uh, the builder, the architect, uh, and in all my years I've never seen the cooperation uh, that was gained by all parties involved. I got a kick out of talking to some of the players about what they liked about being here and uh, a couple of them talked about they loved the dressing room. They loved the dressing room, not only the fact that they didn't have the concrete block in the middle. What were you thinking? What did you want to arrange? What was in the mind to make this the most hospitable dressing room? Well, I think the most important thing fundamentally was to have every player where they sit be able to look at each of their teammates in the eyes at any given time so they really didn't have to turn their heads and ha didn't have to do anything so that there was a amount of uh, sort of uh, pressure put on each other as far as dependability and as we all know the way the game is you have to depend upon your teammate to have success. Well Lou, the one thing that I have to tell you is that uh, I watched this thing grow from day one and I can't I haven't seen any building that's more beautiful than this one but the most interesting thing is the way the arena is conceived where the fans seem to be so close well, that was certainly one aspect that well, you tried to put a new facility and yet have the atmosphere of the older facilities that are no longer in place. And by doing that, you had to do a lot of acoustical adjustments. Uh, and I think that once again, that goes back to the people involved, the people who were designing, and the people who were able to you know, come through with what the thoughts were. So this is a, a fabulous building. Uh, it's come out, uh, I think, as well as we could have ever expected. You asked a lot of people for their opinions, everything from broadcasters to, uh, where, where did you get the best input? I don't think there's any one best input, Stan. I, I think that the commitment everybody had to trying to get all of their individual areas, including yourself and, and your group, to be the best it could be, and they had an opportunity to do that. So they spent the time to give the detail, and they did the homework for us. And then what we tried to do is just tie everything together and try and accommodate everyone and yet know there were certain things you could or couldn't do. But I think we came pretty close to satisfying everybody. Well, you certainly satisfied me, and uh, I'm a trained guy. To be able to come here by mass transit, I think, is one of the wonderful aspects of the thing. Congratulations to you, Lou, and also to uh, Jeff ben Vanderbeek, a job well done. Coming up next, we have Al Troutwig and Hockey Night Live.